The Marvel Universe has only seen more and more heroic hulks over the years. But for every wannabe gamma superhero, there's also a bad guy. And that's why today's list will be counting down the top 10 most powerful gamma powered villains. Coming in at number 10, we have the She Hulk villain Abominatrix, who surprisingly enough doesn't actually have a connection with the more well known villain The Abomination, despite apparently being a gender flipped version of him. Born under the name of Florence Sharples, Florence volunteered for a medical study that involved test subjects being exposed to gamma rays. As a result, Florence became a gamma mutated creature that was constantly in a state of anger, unable to return to her human form as her rage continued to grow. Eventually, she would come into conflict with She-Hulk and nearly destroy Las Vegas during their ensuing fight, showing that the Abominatrix is not to be messed with. Coming in at number 9, we have Burt Horowitz, aka the super genius villain known as Omnibus. Following an incident in which the leader detonated a gamma bomb inside a small town in the middle of Arizona, a local salesman named Burt Horowitz found himself rapidly becoming more intelligent by the minute, a similar mutation to the villain who had detonated the gamma bomb in the first place. In fact, when the leader was believed to be dead for a time, Burt took the name of Omnibus and replaced the leader's position in his massive spy network, becoming a new foe that the Incredible Hulk would have to deal with until the true leader finally returned to take back what was rightfully his. Coming in at number 8, we have the very unfortunately named Jailbait, aka Jesse Harrison, turned into a gamma mutant during the same gamma bomb event in Arizona that also spawned Omnibus. Jesse not only gained the traditional green skin and enhanced strength, but also possessed the ability to generate psionic blasts and force fields, depending on her level of concentration. And while Jesse Jesse's story was recently shown to have ended in tragedy during the Immortal Hulk series, for a long time she stood strong as one of the guardians of the leader's freehold paradise, another green goliath for the Hulk to have to battle. Coming in at number 7, we have the evil Patchwork, a serial killer that somehow manages to be even more depraved than Carnage and Cletus Cassidy combined. Patchwork was one of the very first villains ever faced by Doc Samson, when the doctor decided to do some solo superheroing and proved to be a worthy opponent. Using the gamma radiation oozing off his body to murder innocent women and make horrific sculptures with them, Patchwork was an incredibly durable and strong foe once he came face to face with a gamma power equal, and proved to be a worthy first opponent to be defeated by Doc Samson. Coming in at number 6, we have Tony Masterson, aka Half-Life. Living most of his life as a quiet college professor, Tony's life was forever changed when he accidentally fell victim to a gamma bomb experiment being conducted by S.H.I.E.L.D. The explosion bleached his skin a ghostly green and convinced Tony that he had died and was now a walking corpse. Giving himself the name Half-Life, the villain was a worthy foe for the Hulk after being manipulated manipulated by the leader, and had the unique ability to drain the life force of his enemies through touch alone, like some sort of gamma infused vampire or ghoul. This meant that the Hulk had to be a bit more creative when it came to fighting him, as punching Half-Life would only wind up giving him more power. Coming in at number 5, we have Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, aka the Red Hulk. Now we did also have this guy on our list about most powerful gamma heroes, but considering how his story started out, he definitely also counts for the villain list. Following the death of his daughter after years of pursuing the Hulk, Ross was manipulated by MODOK and several other supervillains into becoming the Red Hulk, in case his nemesis should ever return from his exile in outer space. Following the Hulk's return and defeat, the new Red Hulk began causing damage across the globe, even getting into a fight with Thor on the moon and causing an earthquake in San Francisco from the sheer force of him jumping back to Earth. All in all, the Red Hulk definitely caused some major destruction. Coming in at number 4, we have Emil Blonsky, aka Abomination, a Croatian spy during the Cold War undercover on the same military base where Bruce Banner became the Hulk, Blonsky was the victim of a second gamma experiment when he foolishly activated the reactor on his own. Transformed into a green creature with claws even deadlier than the Hulk, Blonsky took the name Abomination once he realized he could not return to human form, and his days as an incognito spy were over. Stronger and with the healing factor on par with the Hulk. Hulks, Abomination is a twisted look at what gamma radiation can do to someone who's already a trained killer. Coming in at number 3, we have Maestro, a twisted and evil version of the Hulk from a possible alternate future, giving himself a new name after conquering what remains of America following a nuclear winter in this dark future. This version of the Hulk has become far stronger than his original gamma green form, with years of sucking up 
deadly radiation, only improving his ferocity and his power. When the real Hulk encountered this warlord version of himself, the only way he was able to finally come out on top was by literally warping the maestro back in time to be killed by the same gamma bomb that created the Hulk back in the 60s. But even since then, this future version of the Hulk still seems to keep finding ways to return and claim dominion over the world that he claims he deserves to rule. Coming in at number 2 we have Samuel Stearns, aka the leader. Many people throughout the Marvel Universe can claim to be geniuses, but only the leader has the unbelievably tall skull to seemingly prove it. Born a simple blue collar American worker until an accident doused him in gamma radiation, Samuel found himself getting the opposite of most other gamma mutates powers. Instead of becoming incredibly strong, he became incredibly smart, gaining an increased head size as his intellect, ego and ambition all swelled. No matter how powerful and strong most of the Hulk's enemies may seem, few can compare to the terrifying genius of the leader when he's fully unleashed, as his plans have nearly destroyed or conquered the world on countless occasions, and have only been able to be stopped by the Hulk and Bruce Banner trying to use his own genius-like intellect. And finally, coming in at our top spot, we have the most powerful Gamma being of all, because he's the source of all of them. That's right, it's the one below all, residing in the very lowest point of reality at the very bottom of the multiverse. The one below all is the ultimate personification of destruction and hate, essentially being the Hulk-esque alter ego of the one above all, the divine creator of the entire Marvel multiverse. The one below all is the source of all Gamma radiation, as it uses the energy source to gain access to other worlds across the multiverse, and resurrect gamma related beings if they die after becoming connected to the one below all. Even with all of the crazy additions to the Hulk's mythology in the past few years, the one below all is perhaps the greatest, most powerful addition of all time. And who knows what the future holds for the creator of Gamma itself. And that's all the time we have for today's list. Thank you all so much for watching. Normally, we all write and present our own list, but this list was actually brought to you in part by my co-host, Josh Busker, who scripted it but was unavailable to present it to you today, with a few tweaks provided by myself, fellow nerd scriptwriter and co-host Amanda McKnight. So just shout outs to Josh. And before I say goodbye, let's head to the comments to see what you thought of one of our latest videos, Top 10 Most Powerful Omega Level Mutant Villains. Roger Morris suggests, what about Mad Jim Jaspers? His power set is at such a level that a version of him messed up one universe and it had to be wiped out after creating the fury that killed every super powered person in it. At least I think that's what you were trying to say Roger. And you are totally right, I feel like we are always sleeping on Mad Jim Jaspers. I totally forgot he was a mutant, but he's great. I play Pikmin Bloom and I named like three Pikmin after Jim Jaspers. <laughs> True facts. Steve Okpoma responds, Goblin Queen would be good to have in regards to an MCU appearance. Yeah, I agree. I, I think we're gonna need Jean there first maybe, but then bring in Goblin Queen, let's go. Jean then Maddie, let, let's do it. Also, I would definitely really love to have Mr. Sinister in the MCU. Like I'm not holding my breath, but that would be awesome. Mac Welch asks, does Spider-Man have any mutant villains of his own? I know about the legal rights, but that would be an interesting movie. Uh, let's see, Spider-Man definitely has some evil mutated spider-like folks, um, and just, you know, spider mutated folks in general. I would say if I had to pick one villain who was like kind of a mutant villain for him, I would say Sauron. He's not really a mutant, he's like a mutate, but still, Sauron is up there. And you know, Spider-Man has fought with the X-Men before and even had his own class of X-Men that he was in charge of, so I'm sure there's some more if we dig deep enough. And that's all the time we have for comments today. To have your feels and your thoughts and your dreams shouted out in the next video, be sure to comment below and hopefully we will pick you for the next one when we pull comments. We'll see you next time, but until then, you stay nerdy, YouTube.